My name is Yusha Evans. I am a former Christian youth minister who was guided to Islam uh, 12 years ago by my intense study of the Bible, which allowed me to see the inconsistencies and contradictions, uh, not only in the text but in the message. After that, I studied many religions, which finally led me to the light of Islam uh, about 12 years ago. Muslims believe that Jesus is not God, and here's why. The reason we believe that Jesus is not God is not only because it's directly against the contradictory teachings of, or it's directly in contradiction to the teachings of God Almighty Himself, but because of the simple fact that it is against God's very own nature. For instance, in the preceding video, we discussed some of the basic principles of who God is, starting with the beginning, that He is as the Bible describes him, the Alpha, meaning that he is the first, and that he is the Omega, meaning that he is the last, meaning that before him there was nothing, and after him there will be nothing. And everything that exists, exists because of God, and in distinction from God. Therefore, these two things cannot coincide and mix. Even more so than oil, than oil and vinegar, cannot mix. God being the creator and his nature cannot mix with the creation and their nature. Now some of the in-betweens other than God being the creator, Jesus being the creation, God being the one who is not born is the beginning, and Jesus being someone who was born, someone who had a beginning, and apart from God being the last and that there will be nothing that exists after him, we do know that Jesus as a human being does have an ending point. He does have a physical ending and this is not befitting the majesty of the creator that all, of all that exists. Now some of the other very astonishing natures of God that put his nature at direct contradiction with the nature of the creation. Therefore he cannot be a human being and a human being cannot be God. And more specifically, Jesus Christ cannot be God, being that he does carry the attributes of human beings. Is the Creator's attribute, the Almighty Creator God's attribute of being self-sufficient. And in Arabic, we know this as the attribute of God being as meaning that he is one who continues to exist without the need of external means to do so. And this is God's nature, is that he needs nothing. He is in need of nothing to continue to be who he is. He does not need external sources. He does not need external help. He does not need external resources to continue to be who he is. Now, when we look at the nature of the creation in general and Jesus Christ in specific, this was not the nature of the creation, nor was this the nature of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was someone who needed sustaining. He was someone who was not self-existent. He was created in the womb of his mother Mary. Indeed, this was a miracle because we as Muslims do believe that it was without the avenue of a father being involved, that God directly created Jesus Christ in the womb of his mother, which is no great feat to God, the Almighty, in any sense, uh, because of the simple fact that God's ability to create does not detract from who he is whatsoever. It takes no effort. It takes no thought process. God only has to say the word be and things are. Um, and if Jesus Christ's creation in the womb of a mother without a father was difficult, or if you think that this is an amazing feat, then we have to trace all the way back to the beginnings of human creation, to the first human being, the first creation, Adam, alayhi salam, peace be upon him, when God created Adam without the faculty of a mother or of a father, he created him from the dust of the earth and again said to him, be, and he was. So this is not a unique process for God. Now Jesus had to be created in the womb of his mother. He had to go through a gestation period in the womb of his mother, which we know is a very delicate and arduous process in the life cycle of a human being. There are many points that are vital to the uh, sustaining of the human life at this point, in this period. 
and there are many obstacles that can come in the way. So Jesus went through a gestation period in the, in the womb of his mother. He was born of a natural birth. In his infancy, he needed to be suckled by his mother. He needed to be fed by his mother. He needed to be clothed by his mother. He needed to uh, be taken care of on a daily basis with all the necessary needs that we know a child does have. And from being a father myself, I know the, the immense responsibility that is given upon the parent to take care of the child. And if that child is not nurtured uh, and is not taken care of in the best of manners, then that child does not flourish. And in some instances, they do not make it past the age of, uh, of the state of infancy. Now, this was Jesus Christ. He was not self-sufficient. He needed his mother for almost every single thing that he did in this point in his life. And to say that this was the creator, that this was the almighty creator who needed his mother Mary, peace be upon her, to take care of him at every single point throughout the day and night, this is very, very uh, um, unworthy of an attribute of a creator that is self-existing. This is something we cannot attribute to the creator of all that exists, the almighty, the all-powerful God whom we as Muslims refer to as Allah, meaning the God, the one unique creator and sustainer of all that exists. When Jesus grew up, he still was not self-sufficient. He was more sufficient upon himself, but he was no, in no means self-sufficient. If Jesus did not eat, he would not continue to exist. If Jesus did not breathe, he would not continue to exist. If he did not drink water, if he did not have fluids, he would not continue to exist. All of these things we as human beings know that we need <clears throat> to continue our existence, we know that Jesus Christ himself needed. And this is not befitting the majesty of the creator of all that exists. And this is one of the logical reasons that Allah puts forward in the Quran when describing the condition of Mary and Jesus. He said, have you not seen how they travel through the markets and they eat food and they live normal human lives as everyone else lives? Is this not enough evidence for your logic to understand that this is not befitting the majesty of the Creator? Therefore, Jesus Christ, whom we love and respect and we dignify as a Muslim, and honestly, to be a Muslim, you must believe in Jesus Christ. This is one of the basic tenets of our faith, is that you, if you do not believe in Jesus Christ, you cannot be a Muslim. If you do not believe that Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin, you are deviant in your faith as a Muslim. If you do not believe all of the things that Islam has prescribed upon us to believe in Jesus, then your faith is lacking, and in some cases, you are not even allowed to be a Muslim in these senses. So it's a fundamental tenet of our belief system to believe in Jesus Christ. But we do give him the just position that he deserves, that he was God's creation, that he was held in high esteem as he was chosen as God's prophet and messenger to humanity. But then that's where we leave it off at, that he was a creation. Some of the best of creation, yes indeed, but he was simply a creation of the Creator. Therefore, his attributes are at direct contradiction with the attributes of the Creator. And he himself alludes to this fact. In one place in the Bible, a man came to Jesus and fell upon his knees and said to Jesus, O oh, good master, tell me how I may inherit eternal life. And the wording he used is meaning that Jesus was a source of good. And Jesus stepped back from the man and said, Why are you calling me good and the source of good? For there is none that is the source of good except for one, and that is God. He immediately uh, detracted himself from allowing someone to attribute to him something that is solely attributed to the Creator, which is the fundamental principle of Islam as well, is that all good, the source of all good things, is the Creator of all that exists. And Jesus Christ, be upon him, wanted to make sure that it was very clear to this man that he was not the source of good, but the source of good and the source of eternal salvation lied in the Creator of all that exists. In another place, Jesus said, that I must go and ascend to my Father. And if you believed in me, you would rejoice because I go again. But I go and I will come again. He said, 
but I must ascend to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. This is in the book of John. He said, for the Father is greater than I. Referring to the Father in the uh, rabbinic Jewish theology of, they refer to the Father in the terms of the Father of all creation, the Father of everything that exists. Uh, in Arabic, there's a very similar word called Rabb, meaning Lord, meaning uh, sustainer and upholder of all of the creation. This itself is very clear to us that Jesus Christ distinguished who he was from who the Creator was and that distinction was very well known to him and those around him except for those who wanted to take some of the ambiguous statements that he made and twist them um, which is what we as Christians try to do uh, and what I tried to do at one point but what, uh, the fundamental principle is when you look at the nature of God study the nature of God study the nature of the Creator and then study the nature of the creation and study the nature of human beings and study the nature of Jesus Christ himself and you'll find that you'll find yourselves at contradictory odds uh, with these two variant natures and that the nature of God belongs to God alone and the nature of human beings belong to human beings alone and these two do not deserve to be mixed and meddled with within each other thank you very much this has been Yusha Evans telling you why Muslims believe that Jesus is not God